I just hit record and transcribe. You so did? I, okay. Yeah, I'm trying to see though. Okay, recording it has started. started. <laughs> okay. Just making sure I was like looking. I'm like waiting for the pop-up. As long as so. somebody's doing it. Great. Yes, All yes. Right. Okay. So everyone, disclaimer, you're being recorded. Um, so thank you all for joining us today. Um, so the purpose of this meeting is to really follow up from our February uh, stakeholder meeting that we had at the end of February. Um, so that was kind of our annual stakeholder meeting. And at that time, uh, we had talked to y'all about uh, several high priority needs that we were looking at and funding possibilities that we were looking at with one of those possibilities being a potential fee increase um, in fiscal year 24. And so since we had that meeting with y'all in February, we've been continuing to discuss that internally. We also met with our Mobility and Infrastructure Transportation Committee, uh, which is made up of several of our council members in March of this year. And we uh, talked to them about some of our needs really focusing on uh, big scale flood mitigation needs. So we got some feedback from them as well as uh, city management and so uh, really what we want to do today is recap a little bit of um, what our needs are and uh, what our thoughts are on how to fund those and to get your feedback. Um, so our stakeholder group, of course, represents our rate payers. Um, so we really want to hear your feedback on the thoughts on how we would spend uh, the funding um, and then to the thoughts from uh, just Im impacts to the rate payers and, and what y'all think in terms of uh, what we're looking at doing. So again, um, I, I didn't introduce myself, but I think most of y'all know me, uh, Jennifer Dyke, the Assistant uh, Director for the Stormwater Management Program. So with us today, we've got Lauren Prayer. Uh, you'll see her on camera. So she is our Transportation and Public Works Director. And um, we've got Linda Stern here. Linda will be helping facilitate Q&A as our communication Specialist. And then uh, talking today with me um, in terms of presenting the slide, we've got Stephen Nichols, our stormwater program manager, and Juan Cadena, who is our um, field stormwater field operations um, senior CPO. I don't Juan, you can <laughs> you can say later what your title is. I don't know exactly. Uh, Juan does everything. Um, so with that, uh, let's go ahead and move forward, Stephen. And you've got control. Okay, so so basically kind of we're just going to do a little recap of where we're at on our current five year revenue bond program. We're going to talk about um, our needs and funding options, then what uh, what we would like to do in terms of funding for capital projects and maintenance projects, and then go back to uh, the funding needs and kind of recap that based off what we present um, and get your feedback. So Definitely, um, if you've got feedback as we go throughout or questions, um, like raise your hand or message and Linda will be watching the chat um, and we can stop and answer questions along the way. So it's meant to be informal. It's, it, you don't have to don't have to hold your questions to the end. Ask them when relevant. So next slide. OK, so bond accomplishments. Uh, so as y'all uh, probably remember, in 2019, council approved a fee increase of six and a half percent. So the big uh, benefit of that was it gave us the ability to issue a lot of debt over a five year time frame. So we issued the first 53 million in fiscal year 21. We're making great progress um, encumbering that funding. So the pie chart here on the left shows uh, that we've encumbered over $38 million um, and we've got great plans to encumber the rest pretty soon. And we're working on getting ready to issue that next amount, uh, which will be 43 million. So total of around $96 million of debt focused on high priority stormwater projects. Um, next slide. <clears throat> so this slide shows um, the, the column right next to the green column. Um, shows in, in 2019 when we went forward with the fee increase, we initially thought we were going to be able to issue around $70 million of debt. That was based off of the initial interest rate projections and so forth. Um, so the exciting part was now, now that number is up at 96. Uh, but then kind of the downside is that projects cost a lot more. Um, as we all know, we we're dealing with inflation. We're dealing with um, you know supply shortages and material and labor. And so um, just like everyone else in the country, we're dealing with that here at the city of Fort Worth. And so that has impacted um, our, our bond, five-year bond and PAYGO capital delivery goals. 
Um, as well as we've reallocated some of that money. Uh, we always meant to spend it on one big phase of a flood mitigation project. And because of the continued large scale flood mitigation needs across the city, uh, we're going to be taking some of that funding to start fleshing out um, phases. Uh, so doing some initial project development for large scale flood mitigation projects. Uh, the big reason is, is that to try to go after funding, so different grant funding sources or federal funding sources, you've got to have a pretty well fleshed out project. Um, and so right now, we can't even try to go after that money until we flesh projects out. So we're trying to put us put some money to fleshing those projects out so we put us in a position to go after and be competitive to get grant funding, uh, which, which is you know one of the sources that we really think that we need um, to help make this possible. Um, also, I'll note at the very bottom, we got Fort Worth Central City on there. Just a reminder is that that is all being reimbursed by the Tarrant Regional Water District. Um, so while we're fronting that money, we're actually going to be putting commercial paper to it. Uh, we will be reimbursed uh, by the Water District uh, for that. And so it's not going to have any impact per se on, on our capital project delivery timeframes or anything like that. So I wanted to make sure everyone was aware of that. Next slide. So this just kind of shows a few highlights of our 2020 bond program and what was possible with the six and a half fee increase. Um, so just a reminder, um, it, it helped us do an additional phase of a big flood mitigation project. So Westcliff is one of those projects um, that's continuing to move forward. Um, we've got uh, hazardous road mitigation overtopping. So protecting life safety at these um, hazardous crossings channel rehabilitation. We're about to start a big project on West Creek and uh, storm drain rehab. So being proactive, going out there and um, restoring our infrastructure before it fails, which uh, protects life safety. And it's also a whole lot cheaper than waiting until after it fails. Next slide. Okay, so stormwater needs. Uh, so while we're getting a lot of work done, we still got a lot of needs. Um, and that's actually reflected, uh, the city manager puts together a work plan every year, and the work plan for this year actually has um, a section in it that says, evaluate regional solutions to flooding and stormwater problems and recommend strategies. Um, so with that city manager's work plan in mind, um, we have been working to try to figure out, you know, what are our top priorities, knowing um, that, you know, everybody needs funding, um, but, you know, where where can we start to take a stab um, at, at our next priorities? So this just shows some of the uh, flooding problems and infrastructure problems across the city that we have right now. Next slide. So I think we all know, uh, y'all are all familiar with our mission statement to protect people and property from harmful stormwater runoff. Um, and that mission statement directly leads us to uh, working towards council strategic priorities on the next slide. So uh, council has come up with three strategic vision priorities that are all focused on quality of life. Um, so, so our uh, stormwater projects and maintenance efforts that we would like to move forward with um, are all helping to um, really keep our community safer. That's our number one priority. We want to keep our community safer. Uh, we want to invest um, in our infrastructure. We want to um, create quality of life. We want um, areas to be able to, to develop and grow and not be hindered uh, by continued flooding. So um, flood mitigation is not, not an easy thing. Um, we Since our program started in 2006, we've done a lot of those easy projects. Um, and so what we have left are, are the big challenging projects. But even though they're big and challenging, that's not a reason to not address them. But we need to start working towards addressing these projects uh, because they are they are impacting our quality of life. And to me, they're not where we want the city to be. Um, we want our city vision to be the most livable community. Um, and when we have community continued flooding, um, that, of course, impacts livability. Um, it impacts both the city and both residents uh, because the city and residents are constantly having to prepare um, and then clean up after flood events. And so that's what we want to work on uh, reducing. Next slide. So Fort Worth has um, organizational values shown on the slide as well. And so just trying to uh, show that what we're really working towards 
uh, moving forward is we want to provide except, exceptional customer service. So we get calls all the time about our infrastructure needing maintenance and about people flooding. And so that's what we're working to mitigate. Uh, we want to be held accountable um, and spending the um, our resources you know, very wisely and uh, continuing to improve our infrastructure out there. Next slide. So this table we showed um, back at our February meeting. So I just wanted to kind of highlight in here, the yellow um, is where we're looking at um, focusing moving forward. So the big thing that this table shows is um, our main assets, which again are the, the culverts um, under roadways at channels and creeks, our storm drain pipes and our channels are, are, are our main um, assets. Um, a lot of them aren't in great condition, um, especially in older parts of town. They're older um, and we've got a lot of uh, needs that are greater, greater than our resources, just like everybody else at the city. Um, and so that's why we work towards prioritizing uh, where we spend our resources uh, really focused on risk. So, of, of course, again, trying to keep our community safe. Um, I'm not going to go into detail on these, but I wanted to to flag that the, this yellow is kind of what you're about to hear about uh, where we're going to focus uh, some more spending or proposing to focus. Next slide. So this slide too was from the February 23rd uh, meeting. And so it's not updated and we actually have new numbers that Juan's gonna be talking about shortly, uh, but just wanted to mention again that uh, basically, we we took these programs that we mentioned to you in February, the culverts and storm drain inspection and channel maintenance, and we've continued to flush them out and talk about them and prioritize to figure out what is the best way for us uh, to move forward with trying to tackle these continued needs. Next slide. <clears throat> so this is another one uh, that you saw in February as well and it identifies our top priorities for large scale flood mitigation needs. Um, so as you can see here, this is a huge number around $250 million that we're estimating. Um, and this is just in four parts of town. Uh, but again, we feel like that because of the continued flooding and the impact on our community and our residents, um, not just the people who live in these areas, but the people who commute through these areas, who work in these areas, um, that we really do need to start tackling these. The longer we put them off, the more expensive they get. Um, so we need to start now. Next slide. Okay, so so basically, you know, what's it gonna take to make our community safer from flooding and to effectively maintain our infrastructure? So we really think it's, it's a combination of funding sources. Uh, so one is just continued stormwater utility fee increases. Again, our last increase was in uh, approved by council in the fall of 2019 and took effect January 2020. Um, and so we've got a plan all associated with that as mentioned earlier. So, but continued, continuing to um, increase the fee so we can properly uh, maintain our system. Uh, or, well, that maintain our system more effectively than we are today. I won't say properly. <laughs> Uh, because I, I think that that's always going to be a challenge for uh, cities across the country in terms of stormwater. Um, tax increment finance districts. So that is a big discussion that we've been having with our economic development department. And we're looking at those four areas um, that I just mentioned in terms of needing big scale flood mitigation improvements. So could we form a TIF in those areas or the area that does have a TIF? Um, could we use TIF funding to help to um, put towards those flood mitigation improvements. So that's another funding source. And then lastly, as I mentioned earlier, um, grants is a big one. So grants, federal funding sources. Um, so, but to, to be able to apply for those, we've got to flesh out and develop our projects enough so we can be competitive and try to bring that money in to leverage our resources. Next slide. So what we've been doing uh, since we last met with y'all is we have looked at a variety of potential fee increase options um, shown in this table here. Kind of what we're leaning at right now is we kind of like the 15% one-time increase in fiscal year 24, um, knowing that that does not get us all of the way where we think that we need to go, but it, we feel like it's a good step in the right direction. 
Um, we're continuing to have those discussions uh, with, with council, with city management, and with y'all today. Um, so definitely this number is totally subject to change, and that's why we're here, because we want your feedback. Um, and, but we're going to talk about this a little bit more. So this just shows what that 15% uh, increase would get us in terms of in fiscal year 24. Um, so when we pass fee increases at the beginning of fiscal year in October, they don't take effect until January. So that first year, you've got less revenue coming in. So that would give us about 5.9 um, in fiscal year 24 and about 7.9 million in fiscal year 25 as additional new revenue that we could put towards both capital projects and towards uh, maintenance projects. And right now we're kind of looking at um, splitting that. What we've done right now with our program is we have around a 50-50 split where we put around 50% to capital, around 50% to maintenance. Um, depending on what our maintenance needs are, if we've got money left over from that 50-50 split, they go to capital. So we want to try to put um, as much into capital as possible um, while trying to maintain our uh, resource or our resources and assets to the best of our ability. So, so as we move forward, um, just kind of keep this number in mind is that we're looking at splitting kind of right now 50-50 um, our proposed uh, fee increase revenue between the big scale capital flood mitigation projects and between maintenance. Next slide. <clears throat> okay, so Stephen, our stormwater program manager is gonna talk a little bit more detail about our capital projects. All right, so starting to look at those capital projects. In August of 2022, we had uh, some enormous flood events. Um, I think there are a couple of five year storms back to back. I want to highlight here on the left on the map that this, this is the map of all the reported flooding incidents from that storm. So we're looking at over 50 flooded homes or structures, 22 high water rescues, hundreds of flooded vehicles, and uh, 58 overtopped road locations. A few photos here. Um, so this is the West 7th um, or Crockett Street. So the, the mixed use entertainment district down there. Here's a photograph um, from the Linwood uh, Templeton Drive area. You see that's flooding inside their house. They've had to cut out the drywall. We've got Western Arlington Heights, Lakes of River Trails, which is a, a more recently discovered um, concern, as well as the uh, LeBeau area. So uh, Jeff mentioned the the uh, Upper Lebo Linwood projects. Um, she had up a slide showing there's about two hundred fifty million dollars worth of projects there. We've selected these. Um, they were sort of the need there was highlighted by the August 2022 storm. We also have uh, detailed engineering studies for those areas, so, so we already have a good idea or an understanding of what it will take to uh, mitigate that flood hazard. All right, so funding for large scale flood projects. Let me start with a little bit of history, though. So this is the a map of LeBeau on the right. And the stormwater program has been working there for the last 22 years, spending a total of over $24 million on several projects. We had four, I'm sorry, five hazardous road overtopping mitigation projects, as well as other improvements. And so this is just kind of an example of, of how the the business as usual approach, um, where that's taken us in terms of delivering flood mitigation projects. Thinking about those large four projects, Linwood, Jerry McCart, Upper Lebeau, and Lakes of River Trails, we asked our consultant to put together a, a schedule roughly of, of, you know, if we could deliver this as quickly as practical, how, how quick could that be done? And they, they sent us a schedule about seven years. The, the challenge with a, a very quick delivery is it also produces a very high peak in, in cost, which may not be sustainable. Um, so, so staying around FY26, um, a large number of phases would be kicked off all at once. But that's, that's a lot all at once. So we also looked at what happens if we have a less aggressive schedule and we elongate that out over the course of, say, 12 or 13 years. And taking a, a more sustainable approach means we have down here at the bottom uh, smaller but periodic debt sales um, that may be a more sustainable approach. 
the the downside of that is if we allow for some inflation over time or increase in construction costs we may have a, a higher cost at the end of that so still thinking in terms of that 250 million dollar cost in you know 2023 dollars we explored several fee increase scenarios such as the five percent for 10 years or year over year for 10 years, six and a half year over year for 10 years, 25% one time increase. And the graph here tells us about the potential for debt sale those fee increases would deliver. So um, it's really only 25% one time that got us close to that $250 million target. We also looked at a 12% one time increase. We looked at 10% increase in FY24, 26, and 28, and a 12% followed by a 20% increase in FY25. So these last two get us close in terms of debt sale capacity. Where we landed though was you know, we, we can't necessarily take all of our fee increase revenue and put it just to capital, just to debt sale because maintaining our storm drain systems is a lot like maintaining a car engine. It's a lot cheaper to do an oil change every 5,000 miles than it is to rebuild an engine every 25,000 miles. So al although the 15% increase that we're recommending doesn't get us to the, sorry, the $250 million mark, it does give us funding to kick off design and perhaps initial phases of these large projects. The important part about kicking off design there is getting enough information that we can actually go and apply for grant funding. It also gives a little bit of time for those TIFs to build up additional funding. Um, I'm going to hand off to Juan and he's going to cover a little bit about the maintenance focus. All right, good afternoon, everyone. So my name's Juan Cadena. I'm the operations officer senior capital projects officer whichever title fits better i guess at the time uh, for street operations and stormwater operations so i'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, uh, our maintenance program and how this fee increase would impact our operations um, you've seen these slides before i left them in just to recap our program Stormwater Operations has uh, five core programs, four of which we've had from the very beginning, and then we have the one new one. So I want to briefly touch on these for you. Uh, the first program, the Inlet Cleaning Program, is managed by Vicente Elias. Uh, he has about 30,000 inlets across the city of Fort Worth. Our goal is to cycle through them in five years, as well as be able to respond reactively to additional calls uh, you can see the pick on the on the top right of uh, one of our vectors at work that's one of our key pieces of equipment in the inlet cleaning program uh, within that group is also an inspection team and it ins and it primarily inspects the inlets uh, but it currently has it, it currently pulls double duty also inspecting our underground drainage system feeding work over to our closed circuit television program, um, which I'll talk about more in a bit. Uh, then we have the concrete program that is also managed by Vicente Elias. Uh, this section maintains concrete structures like the one you see right there in that center picture, concrete channels, as well as manholes, inlets, and underground drainage system as well. Uh, we have approximately about 1,000 miles of, of uh, underground pipe within our city network. This group also also uh, assists with cave-ins across the city. Next is our channel program, which is managed by Tiana Thompson. Uh, this channel, this channel uh, section, prim their primary function is general maintenance of a channel, um, and we do approximately six miles a year, which is and in maintenance, basically, it's removing sediment and blockage from the channels. And they do about one mile of uh, channel restoration, which is rebuilding failed channels. Uh, they also do bar ditch maintenance as well, uh, and that's reactive. They do about four and a half miles a year in that area. And uh, Tiana Thompson also has the vegetation program, um, 
They're the ones that make our, our channels look good. They mow approximately 85 miles um, a year, three times a year. And that pick on the right at the bottom is one of our channels and our, our mowers hitting that location. Uh, next slide, please. And then we have our CCTV program, which supports the field, field engineering storm drain rehab program. This has been a key focus for us uh, recently. This program has the potential to identify issues like what you see on this picture on the left. That was a uh, sinkhole that developed on 7th Street in Carroll. Um, and other cave-ins and underground issues that, that, that can come up uh, really catastrophic type issues. Um, as we mentioned last time, we now have the ability to send cameras like what you see there on the in the pictures. We have the ability to send cameras inside our underground pipe system, uh, review and assess any any size pipe that we have. Operation does part operations does partner with field engineering uh, to determine the best way to do this, and we can either systematically go and and do condition assessments for areas at a time or we can go reactive with uh, cave-ins and and, uh, and and things like that uh, this program really does provide a great benefit for operations having our own camera gives us the ability to respond quickly to situations next slide please so now, as we look forward uh, to the upcoming years and the potential of that 15% fee increase, uh, we've been looking at we've been evaluating our program and trying to determine the best use of these additional funds. Uh, listed here are the proposed improvement packages that we've been looking at, um, and we have five over the next over five programs over the next five years. Uh, and I'll talk more about those in the in the coming slides. But um, just as, as, as we look at these, we have two proposed uh, packages in FY24, the covert inspection team, pipe inspection team, and FY25, a channel maintenance team, CCTV crew in FY27, and an additional concrete crew in FY28. Um, something I do want to point out uh, is notice the inspection teams. Uh, we learned some time ago that the most efficient an effective way for us to perform work in certain activities is to have an inspection team. Uh, they go in front of the construction crews, so we have the big trucks, the multiple equipment. It's just really inefficient for them to go out, but we have inspection teams that go out in front, so we're not having to mobilize and demobilize our, our heavy construction crews. Next slide, please. So in FY24, we're proposing a covert inspection team and a cleaning team. Uh, this is an area that, that definitely, definitely needs help. Uh, if you'll notice the pictures here, the Dick Price Road location, uh, it's 95% blocked. You can see that one picture on the, on the, in the center. Uh, that covert is, there's really nothing there, very little there for water to flow. Um, and, and the second example is Harmon Road. That's a five foot box culvert that's pretty much 80% blocked, uh, not nowhere near where it needs where it needs to be. Our current problem right now in this area is sediment uh, accumulation across across culverts across the city. Uh, keep in mind, uh, we have about a 90% unknown risk. If you'll notice, we 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 look at uh, about 400 of our 4,000 culverts. Uh, there, there's there's a lot of unknown. There, our goal here is to have an inspection team going citywide and inspecting all our all our culverts. Right now, uh, we don't allow certain sizes of box culverts. A four by five and a five by five are a couple of examples because we just can't maintain them. They're too small for our big equipment and they're too big for our jetters and, and vectors. So we have a gap there that we really can't reach. Uh, this, de this decision package will bring in an inspection team that, that will evaluate our assets across the city, uh, which will then be followed by a cleaning crew uh, with a new remote control uh, piece of equipment 
that will give us access to the currently unmaintainable assets and allows us to start that systematic review and cleaning of our culverts across the city. The startup cost on, on this one um, is 965,000 and uh, annual reoccurring cost is 670,000. Uh, I do want to mention that in all the startup costs that I'm going to mention, that does include uh, labor equipment and material and equipment generally being the biggest chunk of that startup, the startup cost. Uh, and why is this one important to implement? Uh, it, it benefits the city with drainage issues across many locations across the city, uh, protecting property from flood and damage, of course. Uh, and if you'll recall, I mentioned uh, our unmaintainable culvert boxes, this also allows developers to go back and start uh, uh, using that as an option going forward. Next slide, please. So also in FY24, we're proposing a dedicated pipe inspection and cleaning team. Uh, our problem here is we have, our, our goal is to CC about 40, 40 miles of, of uh, pipe per year but we only have the resources to inspect about 25 miles a year. If we put cameras into these two pictures that you see on the right, uh, it just doesn't work. You can see that top picture, there's chunks of concrete in there, our cameras can't get through that. The bottom picture, there's just, it's a half full of, of uh, mud, our cameras can't get through that either. either. And that's where the inefficiencies come in. This decision package will will provide a dedicated inspection team for that pipe system and additional pipe cleaning team that would follow behind. So the startup on, on this decision package, uh, again, labor, equipment, and materials is $2 million. And uh, the annual reoccurring cost would be 741000 uh, In the bullet points, you can see the impacts of no inspection and cleaning uh, that it that this causes us. So uh, you'll notice we have an 83,000 cost per mile of cleaning a uh, section of pipe without, without, I'm sorry, of CCTV without cleaning. And then below that, it, the, the same section of pipe would be about 46,000. So there's an 80, 80% 80 cost benefit in, in, uh, in this CCTV inspection and cleaning program. And the benefit isn't just cost efficiency, uh, inspection, mobilization, de demobilization, time and cost, but there's also a public safety aspect here. Uh, we're minimizing potential catastrophes across the city, uh, reducing flood risk. Uh, this allows us to prioritize these types of, of uh, issues that we can find and, and minimize those ticking time bombs that we potentially have under our roads that we don't know about right now. Uh, and next slide, please. So in, 20, in FY25, we're proposing uh, another channel maintenance crew. Um, good maintenance practices is to keep good condition assets in good condition and not let them go to a fair or poor condition. And that's the idea here. We maintain the channels and operations, and the goal is to keep them from going to a capital program under a restoration, under a restoration uh, program. Um, our problem in channels is that we have 66 miles assessed, and it's created about an 11-year backlog uh, for us. And we have channels currently in the maintenance condition that if we don't get to them soon enough, they're going to go to restoration mode, a, a considerably higher cost. Um, so the proposal here is is adding an additional maintenance crew. Uh, this one is more expensive, uh, mainly because of the equipment that it that that we need to uh, the heavy equipment to to do this work. So we have a four and a half million dollar startup cost with an annual $940,000 reoccurring cost. Uh, proper channel maintenance, why do this? Proper channel maintenance minimizes risk, life and property in, in so many ways. Uh, plus, if you'll notice the difference, we maintain one mile of channel maintenance, sediment and removal. We can maintain one mile of channel at 106,000. If 
we do 5.8 miles a year, that's roughly 600,000 a year and 5.8 miles in maintenance. But if we don't get to it in time, it will roll over to a capital program and that could potentially uh, cost us up to 14.5 million on the capital program. Huge difference there. Next slide, please. So in FY27, uh, we're proposing another, another CCTV crew or, or, or camera crew. This one is dependent on the FY24 package, the pipe inspection and cleaning team. Uh, the, that inspection and cleaning team is gonna feed work to this CCTV package crew uh, because we know that backlog is going to increase and we're not gonna be able to keep up with that, the growth in the backlog. Currently 75% of our work, 75% of our work is performed uh, by a contractor at a higher price. So the proposal here is to add another uh, CCTV camera crew, 889,000 startup uh, and about a 439,000 annual reoccurring cost. So when we look at the bullet points, uh, our current cost is about 998,000 for both in-house and contract. And this, this package will reduce that cost by about 29%. Uh, another really good benefit to this package is really does allow us to be more fluid, turn and pivot on a dime as needed based on the situations that we have. Next slide, please. This is the last uh, decision package that we have in our program for FY28. We're proposing another concrete crew that's focused on the pipe, the pipe rehab. We, we, we anticipate our improved CC, CCTV program teamed up with the pipe cleaning program was gonna identify a lot more unknown issues than we currently have. Uh, we need the ability to respond to those in an appropriate manner and timeframe. This, this package provides that for us. So the proposal is, is another concrete crew at a $2 million startup cost. 931,000 reoccurring cost. Uh, when looking at this benefit with our with our limited resources, in-house crews won't be able to keep up with the need, um, which would require us to fall back on contractors to to help us with those those repairs, of course, at a higher cost. And that's all I have. I guess next in line. Uh, any questions? I don't, no one said anything, so I'm guessing we're good. All right. So, so that's a good, a good pause. So before Stephen kind of talks some more about, you know, in terms of our current fee and fee increase in a little more detail, are there any questions so far on what Juan presented and what Stephen presented? I know Stephen's presentation since in February we went into detail on those four locations, we didn't we didn't recycle those slides again. I figure y'all didn't want to to sit through that again. But just in case there's any questions, I definitely want to pause right now. Okay, let's keep going, and then I'm I'm sure there'll be questions, and we definitely want your feedback uh, near the end of this. So. All right. So so looking at the fee increase history. You know, the, the utility kicked off, I think, in either 2004 or 2006. We had an initial fee of, um, or an EIU, an equivalent residential unit, about 2,600 square feet of imposed BS cover. And over a series of years, um, the fee ramped up uh, to do help deliver the infrastructure and maintenance that we needed. Um, of course, our needs are, are still obviously in excess of, of um, what we're able to, to do. Um, our last fee increase was January 2020 at six and a half percent. And you can sort of see here on the right is our our residential tiers. So a very small home, for example, might be a tier one. Um, your the median tier. So most people are a tier two at one EIU, which is sort of how the equivalent residential unit was set up, um, being the the median house size or residential. Square footage. 
And one of the reasons I want to mention this is we, we have seen sort of 10 and 17, 26% fee increases in the past. Um, we, we evaluated uh, uh, at least seven different scenarios in terms of potential fee increases prior to developing a recommendation. Uh, we looked at both uh, what could be delivered in terms of capital and maintenance, but also considered uh, what it might mean for uh, the median household, but also the commercial ratepayers. Um, each of these scenarios that we considered, um, we've placed in a table here. I've, I've highlighted in the red rectangle our recommendation. So the the fifteen percent ends up being a um, an EIU of six sixty one, which is compared to today less than a dollar a month uh, increase for the median homeowner. Of course, for businesses who are paying um, for you know thousands or tens of thousands of EIUs, the 15% increase does add up. Uh, the city of Fort Worth actually being the, the highest rate payer within the city. We also looked at how these fee increases would compare to other cities within Texas. Uh, today, we're roughly around the average at 575. And we started evaluating each of the different fee increases. So, so for example, the you know, the five percent per year, year over year for ten years, that adds up to to quite a bit over that ten year course. But it also doesn't deliver the type of uh, debt uh, service we we need to deliver large scale flood projects. So the proposed fifteen percent fee increase in FY twenty four puts us here a bit over the average, um, and it does deliver on the maintenance needs, and it helps to deliver or gets kicked off in large-scale flood mitigation projects. Are there any questions about that so far? Do I need to jump back to maybe the previous slide to look at a particular business like an ISD or American Airlines? No, nope. OK. So our sort of draft or initial recommendation is that 15% uh, increase. Again, the median homeowner um, would see a, a less than $1 per month increase on their storm utility fee. Our plan is to split the revenue 50-50 uh, between capital and flood mitigation projects and operation and maintenance. So the, the new revenue would help to fund the design and construction initially, as well as provide um, for more efficient and proactive maintenance, as you heard from Juan. Uh, over the long term, the the four projects we listed out, uh, Limwood, Barry McCart, Upper Lobo, and Lakes River Trails, uh, mitigates flood risk for hundreds of homes and residents, um, as well as the traveling public in general. Um, reduces the floodway, sorry, the, the roadway flooding, improves public safety, economic fatality, uh, reduces the the cost to residents and the cost of city to respond to those flooding events. It also uh, on the maintenance side, it provides for improved assets management and extends the life cycle of um, our assets. So with that, um, Jennifer, did you want to talk on next steps or I'll, I'll cover that? Yeah, so basically we want to hear from y'all today. Um, and then we want to take y'all's feedback and then take it and share it with our um, city manager's office, with council members. We really want to um, to hear what y'all have to say and to communicate that, to share that with our leadership um, to help us as we continue to move forward with uh, our decision making. So uh, then next steps after that is um, in August, the city manager will present his recommended budget to council. Um, and we are also planning to present um, our recommendations regarding um, stormwater fee increases to council as well in August. Um, and then all of that goes to council to uh, vote on budget adoption in September. And then our new fiscal year would begin um, in October. Um, and as I said earlier, if, if we move forward with a fee increase that council does pass, uh, that would actually start in January. Um, so we do that to make sure that everyone um, has an opportunity to find out, to get, to let us communicate uh, to everyone about the upcoming fee increase. 
Um, and so really uh, kind of we want to we want to hear your feedback today. And as we move forward with continued discussions, then we'll be circling back with y'all. Uh, we might run more scenarios depending on what we hear today and what we hear from council and city management as we do that. Um, and so as we continue to work on um, different scenarios and so forth, we want to continue to circle back with y'all. So we will probably have um, some additional meetings I feel like after we met with y'all uh, in February in person, it seemed like the, the virtual meeting worked pretty well versus the in-person meeting. Um, and so if, if that still seems like it works well, we'll probably do that just because I know it's a lot easier and quicker versus people having to, uh, to drive downtown. Um, so with that, um, please uh, chime in and let us know thoughts and questions. So Gay Reed here. You mentioned at one point that you met with some council members. Was that the similar presentation to what we saw today, or was that similar to the February meeting? Right. So, um, so the presentation in to yes to our mobility and infrastructure tra transportation okay. committee. So that was more focused on um, the big scale flood mitigation project. So it gave them an update on where we were at with our capital program and then really focused on that $250 million need. So we did not go into all of the maintenance citywide needs, but we focused kind of on that big one because that's that's really the big source um, of, of how do we tackle these big scale projects? How do we leverage our resources? So that was the focus. Any general comments from them? Uh, so so the, it was really good discussion. Um, I feel like that they were very supportive in understanding the need and that we had to figure out how to tackle it. And they wanted us to come back and to talk to the full council group. And so that's what we've been kind of based off of that interest in. Yes, we need to, you know, we need to do something. Basically, they they uh, they agreed that even though these big scale flood mitigation um, projects that we've identified are kind of for these, you know, for certain parts of town that it had a big impact on Fort Worth livability. And that's not the city that we want to be or the vision of our community. And so they felt like that we should continue having that discussion uh, with the whole larger council so they could consider it as a part of the overall citywide uh, budget for fiscal year 24. Thanks. And, and Gay, uh, what we can do is when we send out the um the link for this stakeholder meeting afterwards we can also include a link to that discussion so if you want to go back and you want to hear exactly what was presented to them um, and to hear that discussion or just jump to the end is always the interesting part to hear the discussion uh, we'll send that link out as well thank you Questions, comments, concerns. I mean, y'all are y'all represent our ratepayers, um, and that's why y'all are here today. Uh, it looks like, unfortunately, several um, of our stakeholders um, who who thought they were going to be able to participate yeah, weren't able to at the last minute. And so, one of the things we will be doing is following up with them um, to get their feedback and see if they've got any questions or concerns to answer. But for y'all on the call, we really appreciate y'all joining us today, and, and we want to make sure that we hear what y'all have to say. So Jennifer, um, Rick Cubes um, had a last minute conflict. He was planning to attend. He did send an email to wanted to express this. He says, I have a last minute conflict, but I am in favor of these necessary increases. And fortunately, it looks like we will be getting some property tax relief. Please let me know if I can help further. So um, short of being in the meeting, that was his feedback. All right. Thank you, Linda, for sharing that. Yeah. I drove by their store yesterday. So. <laughs> and you didn't stop and spend money? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, my money right now is going to TCU because my daughter's in the TCU soccer camp. So uh, I <laughs> yes. spending money in the area. <laughs> so this is not specific to what we've discussed today but you know there was a uh, the the area in Arlington Heights that the proposal was to take down those houses I believe they've been purchased all mm -hmm. and it was either take down the houses create a green space at one point there was thought that they would be uh, 
possibly could be sold to somebody who was willing to mitigate the, you know, bring it up to a level. Mm -hmm. I've heard recently that that's off the table. Is that what's going on there? Right, right. So we actually had a public meeting uh, with the Arlington Heights community a couple weeks ago. I think it was May 25th. Um, Uh So what we're what we're doing is we have purchased um, 11 properties. So two of them we purchased with uh, FEMA grant funding. Uh, We got some good funding for that. And so those have to remain green space uh, in perpetuity based off of the grant requirements. Um, And we can't sell them. They've got to be city owned. So but the other nine. Um, Based off of the continued coordination with the community, we are going to issue a notice of sale to sell those properties for redevelopment with very uh, clear guidelines that the the future homes have to be elevated at least two feet above the base flood elevation, which is our requirement uh, citywide in flood prone areas. So we want to make sure um, that they're elevated as well as that when they're developed, um, that that developer is considering the impact um, on the adjacent properties and and doesn't aggravate that existing flooding condition. So. Okay. Thank you. And, and so Gay, you also mentioned, you know, Arlington Heights. So as y'all saw, Arlington Heights isn't on the list um, of these big four projects. And, and that is a known uh, big citywide uh, flooding problem in Arlington Heights. And the reason it's not on that list is because we felt like that we have already invested a lot of funding in the Arlington Heights area. We put in um, a stormwater detention basin at Hewlin Bryce, um, as well as under street detention. Of course, all of that is just like one little piece of the puzzle, but it has had significant benefits um, on those residents out there. They will say, um, you know, that they do flood less frequently in that area. They see the basin fill fill up uh, quite frequently, as well as we bought out those 11 properties that were the most uh, frequently flooded reported um, flooding. And so that's why we really want to take um, the next round of funding and try to target other areas of the community that haven't had uh, those flood mitigation projects. And, and Upper Lebo, we've done a lot of projects on Lower Lebo, but that Upper Lebo community continues to flood um, and it's a, a socially vulnerable community. And we really want to get out there and help them because they have continued flooding. I agree. Thank you. Any other questions or feedback? And if you if you uh, don't want to talk today in front of everybody, that's totally okay. Please feel free to reach out to me or Stephen or Linda or Juan um, after the meeting. Um, so if you want to go and you know talk to your friends and neighbors and um, get them excited, we definitely you know we want your feedback. That's why we're meeting with y'all today. Um, so I don't want to a whole bunch of time. I know y'all are all busy people and uh, I really appreciate your hours. So any other questions, feedback? Can we go back to the slide that Stephen had with the stakeholders and increases? Yes. There we go. Okay, so this is this is what y'all are targeting, the 15% fiscal year for 24, correct? That's what we're looking at right now. Uh, That's the ultimate goal. Okay. But definitely, so I w- I'll say, you know, the, it, Carrie, it's subject to change, but that's that's kind of what we're recommending right now in our discussions. Um, so we were trying to look at something that could take a good, very measurable, beneficial step forward. Um, again, it doesn't solve all of the problems, but um, trying to balance taking a good step forward as well as the impact on our ratepayers who are having to fund this. Of course. And of course, we want to save money with our company. So I understand y'all's need, but we don't want any increases at all. But um, I just want to look ahead just in case it does get approved. So definitely, definitely. I can understand that. And we'll send out the um, the PDF of this presentation as well, Carrie, so you could pull the numbers off this easier. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion right now? I would like to say as a resident, though, I am all for it. <laughs> On behalf of American Airlines, no, but resident okay. I'm for it. No, thank you, Carrie. And I understand, um, you know, this is going to have a big impact um, on on our top rate payers that have all of that impervious surface out there. Um, I will say, though, you know, the city of Fort Worth is is the number one rate payer. 
Um, I know like Fort Worth ISD and American Airlines are just a little bit behind. Um, but but I want to be clear, you know, that we're not asking other big right payers to pay something that we're not paying into ourselves. So understandable. Thank you. Yeah, at our last uh, meeting, Carrie was telling me she went through a pretty uh, harrowing experience, I believe, um, with some flood issues in her area. So that's why she's personally all for it. Do you live in Fort Worth too? Bond, Bonds Ranch and Wagley Roberts. So y'all know oh. that area very well. <laughs> yes, yes. So um, so in terms of that location, just so you know, um, is that uh, we, the there's a, a Wagley Robertson and Bonds Ranch um, bond project um, that there's 2022 bond funding. and But the stormwater uh, program is actually putting uh, $5 million towards some improvements on Wagley Robertson um, at there's a creek just a little bit south of Bonds Ranch that overtops pretty frequently. And so we're using part of that past fee increase and in bond funding to combine that with the 2022 general funded bond program to start to work on mitigating um, the flooding out there. And Bonds Ranch will have uh, those improvements will have significant uh, road flooding improvements as well. So that's what we're really trying to do is where we can partner with other other city departments, other partners, getting that grant funding to try to leverage our resources as much as possible. Nice. Yeah, that whole area is growing. We're going to get the bridge over the train tracks by 2026. And I saw that. The Kroger. Nice. So it'll be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it will be. Just got to hang in a few more years. <laughs> okay. Any other discussions, questions, comments? I know it's it's four o'clock, so I want to thank you all again for joining us today. Um, and uh, we'll be following up probably within the next couple of days with the recording. I, I'm not sure how long it'll take to get it. So it's um, in a format, but I would assume by maybe Monday, at least that we can get a link that we can send out uh, with a PDF as well. So then again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you all. We really appreciate it. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Bye.